Right, just having real trouble detaching this bulkhead. Um, drilled a load of the spot welds down here, but the uh, the shelf just doesn't want to come away from uh, from the bulkhead. Um, so what I've done? Cut out a little bit of the scuttle. Now I'm going to cut out a section of the bulkhead just so we can get a better view. It's not providing any strength because it's all detached anyway. So yeah all rusted pitted so let's cut this piece out and see where we're at we go not that that will be much use but we'll keep it hanging around in case we ever need a little bit so now we can get a bit of a view of this shelf connection here and try and uh, try and unpick this along here just looking at the uh, lower shelf here um, trying to get it away from the bulkhead you can see it's not in the best condition along here haven't entirely decided whether I'm going to be uh, repairing it or replacing it but for either of those what I've got to do is sort out this here now this is in two sections the horizontal flimsy part and then the reinforced front and it's kind of spot welded through along here um, so possibly those could be drilled out not entirely sure what happens in this section here with this um, this extra piece maybe that has to come off as well don't know whether that comes with the shelf but before I do either of them I've got to get this removed and what this is is a sheared bolt on the steering column so they've got um, stress fracture bolts um, they have a narrowing in them so they can break on impact you can see that it's sheared off and it sheared off at the narrowing which is what's meant to happen I think in a crash but obviously when it's being undone it's not supposed to be quite so seized in the nut so rather than undoing from the nut it's sheared at the weakness here so I need to remove the offending bolt from the top and these nuts are welded down to this plate so the only option I've really got is to grind it away the next bits I'm going to go at are where the cross member is actually hollow um, so that's underneath underneath the um, right hand drive or left hand drive mounts for the um, cylinders hi it's time to see if i can do some repairs to this parcel shelf here and uh, we're just going to have a go at that and see what happens otherwise worst case we'll have to buy a new parcel shelf but i think it's worth repairing especially because it's out of sight completely um, yeah I think I think we can probably do it so detaching it from the rail is probably not the easiest thing in the world anyway hopefully we'll be able to just repair the back edge of it so what I'm going to do this is all really pitted around here so I'm going to replace a piece in here uh, obviously that edge there is not too bad but that edge there is missing so we're going to start trying to fix up this middle section because we've got access to that now and later i'll probably replace some of the rustiest part of the lip like this bit 
and then there'll be some sort of repair behind here. Here are all the pieces that I've just cut out. Obviously, that piece used to have a right angle, right, it's actually about 100 degrees. Um, I've just hammered it flat. Uh, that piece is the extra depth I need <coughs> in that five centimeter section. And then this piece has got the little flick up on it where the shelf changes angle. So I'm gonna have to flatten that to um, make the right size piece. But before I flatten that, I've just traced along its profile here. So I've got this line and I'll use that line to um, re-bend the new piece of material. We'll mock that up, uh, cut it out and do our best to make that in one piece. Oh, and then there's, there's this piece that I cut off, off of that there, um, which will probably, well, I don't know, either I'll make one of these or I'll re-weld this one back onto the new piece. Right, there's the next update. I've got that. I'm just holding that piece there, but um, you'll need to get welded on to the back of the new piece. Take him out of the way. If I, if I can take that bit out of the way. <laughs> That's just that piece. And then here I've just used a couple of pairs of pliers to put sort of pretty much straight bend there and then a very slight angled bend there to uh, make that form to that line that I drew on the, you know, before I flattened the piece, the first piece. Um, yeah, and we put that bend in there and obviously just before I put that bend in there I drilled some holes for plug welding, although I'm not actually sure <laughs> whether I'm ever going to make those, be able to make those plug welds, but hopefully we will. Right then, we've now got that piece welded on with a reasonable weld, about as good as it's going to be on such thin metal. You can see the penetration through on this side. Um, yeah, I think that is okay. So I'm going to look at see if I can get this piece tacked in to the car now and go from there. Right guys, there she is in place. Tiny bit of etch primer on the top there so it doesn't rust now. I'm gonna do the underside in a moment. Um, yeah, it's pretty thin. I think probably only about 0.4 uh, mil that steel. So I did blow a couple of holes which I had to then fill in and unfortunately just caught the edge of my circle there. Um, not that it's a perfect circle, but it's not too bad. There's a rubber grommet that fits in there to let the wiring loom through for the uh, dashboard switches. I think it looks all right. Seem to have saved that section of the panel. There's a couple of other little bits that I will need to do on this panel, but yeah, pretty sure we're going to be able to keep it. That was the most complicated part by far. I just thought I'd show all the tools I used to do that job. Um, I used this vise to uh, basically bend over the sort of 90 degree part on that patch that I made and then here's everything else so the welding mask safety goggles hat whatever gloves and then my angle grinder so this to grind down the weld with the flap disc and then the cutting disc to cut it out and that's just changed a bit on the grinder then obviously the MIG welder ring file just to uh, create that curve circular cut out pliers to bend it to give us the step in it cutters to cut the welding wire bit of copper to back when welding on that thin metal and a couple of clamps obviously the welding gas and the welder 
so just basically trying to say that you don't need expensive equipment okay yes you need the welder but um, other than that it is possible to make up patches and, and save panels if you got the time and uh, yeah just thought i would show you what i used cheers guys